Welcome to Rebuilding a Vintage Open Steam Launch and this is part 29, piping the steam engine to the boiler and the condenser oil trap. When piping a model steam plant, it's most important to think ahead. In this case, I'm looking at where I'm going to put the displacement lubricator. It needs to be in a very accessible place for filling and emptying, so I think I'll put it about here. One of the first things I'm going to need is some pipe. This is 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter and I'm going to use this to go from the superheater to the displacement lubricator. And from the displacement lubricator to the regulator, the piping will need to be 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter, because the steam regulator has a quarter by 40 threads per inch steam union. I've piped up quite a lot of steam plants in my time, and I find it quite straightforward. It's just a case of making the bends in the right place, and making sure the pipe is long enough to fit between the two points. To make a successful job of piping a steam plant, there are certain protocols to be observed. Mainly, make sure the bends are even, and try not to run the pipes diagonally to the steam plant. Try and keep the steam piping low down in the boat, that way you will not burn your fingers on the pipe, and use a pipe bender where necessary to avoid any kinks in the pipe. Silver solder the unions to the pipe, bring the pipe back and try it in place and make sure it fits OK. If it doesn't, start again. I'm not bothering cleaning up this pipe yet. I'll do it all in one go once I've got the complete pipe run made. This first pipe run connects from the superheated outlet on the boiler to the displacement lubricator. I could of course put the displacement lubricator on the engine, but using a slide valve regulator of this type, it really needs the displacement lubricator to be before the regulator in the circuit and this prevents the scoring of the valve and the port face within the regulator. The next piece of pipe goes from the outlet of the displacement lubricator to the inlet of the regulator, and as the T-piece on the displacement lubricator is a 5 sixteenths by 32 union nut, I need to use an adapter union cone. If you look at this one, this is a 3 sixteenths union cone, and it's a rattle fit on the pipe. You could actually silver solder this, but it looks very messy. A much better idea is to use one of these adapter cones. This is a 5 30 seconds of an inch diameter internal, and the external diameter is suitable for a 5 16 by 32 union nut. So via the magic of video, here's a silver soldered item. And once again, I'm not cleaning up this piping, I'm going to do it all at the end. I'm not showing the silver soldering process because I've done lots of videos about silver soldering. If you want to have a look at the silver soldering video that most people watch, it's called Silver Soldering for Beginners. These cones that I'm silver soldering onto the pipe are really called pipe nipples, but I do not say the word nipple because some people seem to get excited about this and make stupid comments, so I call them union cones, which is a word for a pipe nipple in the 21st century. I've had one or two comments from viewers about the fact that they don't understand what I'm talking about because they really don't speak English and there's not a lot I can do about that because you have to speak English and also understand my Yorkshire dialect. And I try at all times to clean up my Yorkshire accent. For instance, I never say, I'm out to fetch water for steam engine. Instead, I would say, I'm going to fetch some water to fill the boiler in the steam plant in order to run the steam engine. I just thought I'd clear that up to avoid any confusion. This clip shows the inlet pipe run, from the boiler, to the displacement lubricator, to the regulator and to the engine. And now it's time to fit the exhaust piping, and for this I'm using quarter inch pipe. Quarter inch pipe is much more difficult to bend, and it's very easy to kink if you bend it too severely. I would recommend that when bending copper pipe above 3 sixteenths of an inch, that you use a commercial pipe bender. This stuff is much harder to bend. Pipe runs look really neat when they follow each other round corners, and that's what I'm going to aim for with this. This clip shows me tightening the union nut on the condenser, and then I will repeat the process and make the next pipe. In the way of a short interlude, these are my pipe benders. The smaller ones are quite expensive, surprisingly expensive, the larger ones are not. But in reality, I bend 3 sixteenths and 5 30 seconds of an inch pipe by hand. I only really use commercial pipe benders for quarter inch pipe and upwards. As I've just mentioned, pipe runs look quite good when they follow each other, like this. This is quite good. And you will notice that all this piping I'm keeping low down in the boat, because all of it is going to get hot. 
the only really exposed pipe is the one to the chimney, and that's an exhaust pipe. It still gets hot, but nowhere near as hot as the inlet pipes. I always keep these as low as possible to avoid burning my fingers on them. Any piping that needs to be high, like the piping that goes to the displacement lubricator, will be clad in string and painted. And this string wrapped round the pipe gives sufficient heat insulation to prevent burning your fingers. Time now for a test fit of the superstructure. This part of the superstructure fits around the boiler and the engine, and it's most important that the piping fits in there too. I mentioned earlier about the importance of not having any of the piping running diagonally anywhere on the steam plant, and at the moment, because of the fitting of the superstructure, you can see that the pipe from the exhaust is running slightly diagonally, and this does not look good. So what I'm going to do is just notch out a little bit of the running board, and this will accommodate the pipe and everything will be parallel. So using this little drum sander in my Minicraft drill, it makes short work of cutting a notch in the running board. This will accommodate the steam pipe from the exhaust. I've been quite lucky really that most of the superstructure still fits. I've only had to make slight modifications to make it fit properly. This boat is very old and the superstructure is quite fragile. And the glue holding it together is very old and quite fragile. So I'm taking great care not to put too much stress onto these components. In this clip I've turned round the superstructure so I can sand it from a different direction. This is just to even out wear on the drum because part of the drum is sand in the aluminium checker plate. So with all the piping in position it's time now to try a final fit of the superstructure. It's quite fiddly getting it in place, it has to move around the piping a little bit. But in the end it's all looking very good and I quite like the appearance of the quarter inch pipe going up to the chimney. If you're watching this and thinking, what's all that white stuff on his right hand? It's paint, it's not a disease, it's some paint because I've been painting a bedroom at home. But thankfully the painting job is almost finished now and it's good to get back to making the model steam videos. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.